Okay class, today we're in section 5.4, Solve Compound Inequalities. Section 5.4, Solve Compound Inequalities. Before, you solve one-step and multi-step inequalities. Now, you will solve compound inequalities. Key vocabulary, compound inequality. A compound inequality consists of two separate inequalities joined by AND, OR, OR. The graph of a compound inequality with AND is the intersection of the graphs of the inequalities. Alright, to understand AND, let's take a look at X is greater than a negative 2. AND at X is less than or equal to 1. Look at both graphs carefully. Notice the negative 2 is circled but not shaded and is darkened in the greater than direction. Notice the 1 is circled and it is shaded because of the equal to and it is darkened in the less than direction. Now when we combine x is greater than negative 2 and x is less than or equal to 1, this is what our graph looks like. We would write it as such. x is greater than a negative 2 and x is less than or equal to 1. Notice the 2, the negative 2 is circled but not shaded. The 1 is circled and shaded and we darken the 1 going this way and we darken the 2 going that way. Remember the negative 2 was greater than so it's darkened and the 1 was less than so it goes that way. So that would be a graph representing AND. Now the graph of a compound inequality with OR is the union of the graphs of the inequalities. So for and, the common word is intersection. For the word or, the common word is union. Let's take a look at the graphs for x is greater than or equal to 0 and for x is less than a negative 1. Once again, notice the graph by itself. Greater than or equal to 0, that means the zero is circled and shaded and darkened in the greater than direction. In the greater than direction. Notice that the negative one is circled but not shaded but darkened in the less than direction. Now, the way we read these, working with the word or, and don't forget our key term is union. We end up reading it as x is less than a negative one or x is greater than or equal to zero. Notice, all you're doing here is you're taking both graphs and putting them on the same graph. But notice how they go in different directions. So for OR, one will be going in the less than direction and the other goes in the greater than direction. And both of the graphs will come back towards each other. This one is going this way and that one is going that way. Once again, this one is going to the right this one is going to the left. This one is going to the left and this one is going to the right but in opposite directions. Example 1. Write and graph compound inequalities. Translate the verbal phrase into an inequality then graph the inequality. A. All real numbers that are greater than a negative 2 and less than 3. Your inequality for that statement would be x is greater than a negative 2 and x is less than 3. Once again, notice I'm reading from the inside out. Inside out. x is greater than negative 2. x is less than 3. So that graph will look like so. x is greater than negative 2. That means I come down here. I circle my negative 2, but I do not shade it x is less than 3, that means I find my 3, I circle it, and I do not shade it. Alright, and I realize that when they say x is less than 3, that means I'm going to shade this line back in this direction, going back that way. And when they say that x is greater than negative 2, that means I'm shading the line going back that way. So as you can see, they both head towards each other. All right, and the key word there is and. And don't forget, what does and represent? 
All right, and don't forget, and means what word? And means intersection. And is going to mean intersection. Remember back up here. And, and the keyword is intersection. Or, the keyword is union. Okay, let's take a look at B. All real numbers that are less than 0 or greater than or equal to 2. All real numbers that are less than 0 or greater than or equal to 2. Here's our inequality. X is less than 0 or, I like to put that word down, or. X is less than 0 or X is greater than or equal to a negative 2. Since it uses the word or, we know that they're going to go in opposite directions. So X is less than 0. I find 0. Circle it. Do not shade it. Less than goes back that way. Then I have X is greater than or equal to 2. I locate the 2. Circle it. Shade it because it says equal to. And then I shade in the greater than direction. And I am finished. Alright, and don't forget what word goes with OR. That would be union. Example 2. Write and graph a real-world compound inequality. Camera cars. A crane sits on top of a camera car and faces toward the front. The crane's maximum height and minimum height above the ground are shown. Maximum 18 feet, minimum 4 feet. Write and graph a compound inequality that describes the possible heights of the crane. Solution. Let H represent the height in feet of the crane. All possible heights are greater than or equal to 4 feet and less than or equal to 18 feet. So, the inequality is H is greater than or equal to 4 and h is less than or equal to 18. Okay, to make that graph, we locate h is greater than or equal to 4. We find the 4. We circle it and we shade it. Then we locate the 18. We circle it, we circle it and we shade it. h is greater than or equal to 4, so we shade that one going in this direction. h is less than or equal to 18. We shade that going in this direction. So we have written our compound inequality and we have graphed. Solving compound inequalities. A number is a solution of a compound inequality with n if the number is a solution of both inequalities. A number is a solution of a compound inequality with or if the number is a solution of at least one of the inequalities. Example 3. Solve a compound inequality with n. Solve, and notice how I read this, inside out, inside out, inside out. x plus 5 is greater than 2, and x plus 5 is less than 9. Again, x plus 5 is greater than 2, x plus 5 is less than 9. Then graph your solution. Solution. Separate the compound inequality into two inequalities. Then solve each inequality separately. So we're going to end up with x plus 5 is greater than 2 and x plus 5 is less than 9. So now we solve this one for x. Alright, since we want to get the x by itself, then we're going to subtract 5 from each side. So, we end up with a minus 5 here and a minus 5 there. Same step is needed for this inequality. Minus 5 here, minus 5 there. Now, what is 5 minus 5? That goes to 0. So, we're left with just x by itself. What is 2 minus 5? That's going to be a negative 3. So one of our answers is x is greater than a negative 3. We come over here, 5 minus 5, that goes to 0. We're left with just x. Now what is 9 minus 5? That's going to be 4. So the compound inequality can be written as x is greater than a negative 3 and x is less than 4. 
Now, some of you may be asking, do I have to write my answer in this form? And the answer is yes. So, you have two different inequalities. You have to write them as one compound inequality. Once again, x is greater than negative 3, x is less than 4. The solutions are all real numbers greater than negative 3 and less than 4. All right, in your graph, we'll look at such. x is greater than negative 3. Go to negative 3, circle it, do not shade. And it says x is greater than, so you're going to shade in this direction. Then you locate x is less than 4. Find the 4, circle it, do not shade it. Less than goes in this direction. So all, all your values are trapped between negative 3 and negative 4. And remember not to shade at each one of those. Another way. In example 3, you could solve x plus 5 is greater than 2. And x plus 5 is less than 9 by subtracting 5 from 2 x plus 5 and 9 without first separating the compound inequalities into two separate inequalities. To solve a compound inequality with and, you perform the same operations on each expression. Example 4. Solve a compound inequality with and. Negative x minus 3 is greater than or equal to a negative 5. Negative x minus 3 is less than or equal to 2. Graph your solution. Step 1. Write the original inequality. Negative x minus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 5. Negative x minus 3 is less than or equal to 2. We want to get the x by itself, so we got to get rid of this 3. So add 3 to each expression. So to the negative 3, add 3. To the 2, add 3 and to the negative 5 add 3 so once again once again each expression 3 3 and 3 now you simplify a negative 5 plus 3 is a negative 2 a negative 3 when added to a positive 3 that goes to 0 so you're left with just negative x 2 plus 3 is 5 alright so now you have a negative x is greater than or equal to a negative 2 and a negative x is less than or equal to 5. All right, now our next step then is to get this x to be positive. Right now it says a negative 1 times x. Now in the book it says divide. We're going to ignore that. Now it just so happens that if you divide or multiply by a negative 1, the results will come out to be the same as, as in down here. But we're not going to do that because you've been trained to do the opposite of what you read. And since it says a negative 1 times x, we're going to divide everything by a negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. A negative 2 divided by a negative 1 is a positive 2. A negative 1x divided by a negative 1 is a positive x. And 5 divided by a negative 1 is a negative 5. Now also don't forget that when you're working with inequalities, if your last step involves multiplication or division by a negative number, you must reverse the symbols. In this case, we have two inequality symbols we, we must reverse. So the negative, excuse me, the greater than or equal to becomes the less than or equal to becomes greater than or equal to. The less than or equal to becomes greater than or equal to. Once again, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Okay, now after doing so, I'm going to read from left to right. So right now I have two is greater than or equal to x and x is greater than or equal to a negative 5. Once again 2 is greater than or equal to x and x is greater than or equal to a negative 5. I'm going to rewrite this from inside out. So it becomes x is greater than or equal to a negative 5 and x is less than or equal to 2. Now how did I get the x is less than or equal to 2? Because if 2 is greater than or equal to x that must mean that x is less than or equal to 2 it becomes the opposite. So once again, after rewriting and putting in the correct form, I end up with x is greater than or equal to a negative 5 and x is less than or equal to 2, reading from the inside out, inside out. So the solutions are all real numbers greater than or equal to a negative 5 and less than or equal to 2. So you go here, circle negative 5, shade it. Go here, circle negative 2, shade it and then shade in the proper direction and you're finished.